In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. David said, Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I decree that the eyes of everyone under the sound of my voice, both in this service and around the world, be opened to the light of the world today. Amen. Just last Sunday, the Lord delivered us as a commission from so great a death. One of the agents of the devil who walked into one of our major churches in Kaduna, that church is about 6,000 people, and the first service will be about 2,000 people, and carried a device, an explosive device, because they are of their father, the devil, who is a murderer from the beginning. And place it, look at it, that was in his bag, and placed on his seat, and went to the toilet to go and press. He pressed, he pressed, nothing pressed. <laughs> Amen. The Lord's a rock in him we hide, a shelter in the time of time. Secure whatever he'll be tied. A shelter. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a wee thriller. A wee thriller. In a wee thriller. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a wee thriller. A shelter. Lift up your two hands and celebrate God who has delivered us from a great death and we yet deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver He has delivered us from so great a death and does deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Thank you, Jesus. For the rescue of your people from the assault of the enemy. Take all the glory. Take all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Let's read that together. It will reinforce your confidence in God. 2 Corinthians 1, 9 and 10. But together, we are the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Please, you may be seated. It's my year of breaking limits. That deliverance is not by our power, nor by our mind. He said, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. He will say, as he not saved, he will rejoice over thee with joy. Is God not rejoicing right now? He will rest in his law. He will joy over thee with singing. I can imagine commotion in heaven as the angels were celebrating the faithfulness of God for the rescue of his people. Come on, give the Lord a bigger clap. For they shall gather together, but not by me. And everyone that gathers together against you shall fall for yourself. So I decree the irrecoverable fall of this evil system. Amen. A total irrecoverable collapse. 
every sponsor from official quarters or private quarters of this killing and assault particularly against the church of Jesus. Your fall is established in heaven. Amen. Your memory is gone into the oblivion. Amen. Your names will be cast out as menstrual rags. Your generation after you will smell on the streets of Nigeria. <laughs> it's a hard thing for any devil to kick against the pricks. Ne posi keruali shangela bolates, ne prodoti kanero taba. Your spell can catch anybody, not a prophet. So I've come out in the name of the Lord and inflict an irreversible curse on every authority, on every individual back of these killings in Nigeria in the name of Jesus Christ. It's established in heaven. It's established in heaven. Amen. To go inside the church. You say they are miscreant. Why didn't they go to mosque? Why go to church? To go inside the church. You think we are dummies? Ne prosi kakande oriande polake. What a callous system. What a wicked system. What a killer system. Your end has come. Yeah. Church, you will hear news. Yeah. They school that boy to say that he's a member of the church. But he confessed eventually. He said that's what they told him to say. We are very close to napping who sent. Amen. Amen. Not a member of this church. A, a member of this church with the love of God in his heart will carry things. No, no, no. They are devils from their domain. Yes, the bad news for them is that their end has come. Yes. Except I'm not sent, their end has come. Shame to you, Satan. Shame to your agents in Nigeria. Shame to your agents in authority. Give the Lord a big clap of triumph. Amen. Unveiling a breaking limit heritage in the world. How dare you think about breaking limits? Or you should be thinking about survival? It's as far as your eyes can see unto you will I give it. Jesus said, whosoever believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my father. That's a picture of our breaking limit heritage in Christ. Think you that I've come to destroy the law? No. I've not come to destroy it, but to fulfill Matthew 5, 17. So everything in the Old Testament has been ratified into one with the New Testament by Jesus. So 
If you hearken to my voice and observe to do what I command you to do, I'll set your high above all nations. That's breaking limit, my friend. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. You shall be above only. You shall not be beneath. That's breaking limit. You shall learn always and you shall not borrow. That's breaking limit. But God has made a provision that helps us to see who we are. Because God's word is a spiritual mirror that shows who we are in Christ. Amen. You see who you are from a natural mirror. So from the spiritual mirror, you see who you are spiritually in redemption. James 1. 22 to 25. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's like unto a man that's beholding him, his face, his natural face, in a mirror, that glasses mirror. For he beholdeth himself and went his way, and so we forget it, what manner of man he was. But also look at into the perfect law of liberty and saw his picture and continues therein, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. So the picture shows you what to do to actualize it. A doer of the work. What you know does not change you. What I know does not change me. It is what I do with what I know that does. For instance, you know that only hard workers become high flyers in the race of life. Seest thou a man that is diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, men. Not a man that's loitering about. You know without faith, even though Christ has paid for your total health, you cannot be healed. Do you believe that I, the son of man, am able to do this? They say, yeah, okay, according to your faith, get your healing. So your healing is according to your faith. According to your faith. According to your faith. Well, it became poor that we through his poverty might become rich. That's okay. But what do you do to be rich? But thou shalt remember the Lord your God for it is that give it the power to get well, that he may establish his covenant. So you locate his covenant and engage with it. What's his covenant? Why the earth remain a seed time and happen shall not cease. So you just be singing 2 Corinthians 8 9 without a reality of it in your life because you won't do the work that empowers you to actualize it. So the picture does not deliver itself. You walk the walk. It demands, then you actualize it. Can I hear your amen? amen? Yes, the world says you're an ambassador of Christ, that's okay. But how do you actualize that status? How do you enjoy the minute that comes along with it? You keep reconciling the loss back to God. Then you are a certified ambassador for Christ. Can I hear your amen? amen. You have to do the work before you can actualize the picture. The picture is gorgeous. The picture is glorious, but you do the work. Let me tell you how impactful these pictures are. You don't hear pictures, you see pictures. The word of the Lord which Isaiah saw, which Isaiah the son of Amos saw, Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1, which Isaiah the son of Amos saw, so there are things to hear, there are things to see, and there are things there are things to hear, there are things to read, and there are things to see. You see that in First John chapter one, the things which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and which we have looked upon and which our hands have handled. You see it before you can handle it. You see it well before you can handle it well. 
you have to look upon it. 1970, I saw be redeemed as a priest and a king to reign on the earth. Nobody preached it to. I just saw it by myself. Eh? So, I am redeemed a king. So, anytime I wanted to go out, I would check. Will the king go out like this? No. David, go and change. A king doesn't walk about with slippers in town. Praise God. The picture so imparted on my mentality that redemption does not make you an ordinary citizen. It makes you a king to reign on the earth. So I saw myself reigning as a king by redemption. That's how powerful pictures can be. And pictures stay much longer with you than words. So this morning we'll be checking through the mirror of the world who you are in redemption. It will change your approach to life forever. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I lost every form of slavery mentality as early as 1970 by a picture from the world. By a picture from the world. The picture of Jesus carrying my sickness and disease made me to cry. Yay! I can never be sick. I saw him took my place like he took the place of Barabbas and death. And Barabbas went to throw him party. Amen. Jesus died in his place. Amen. 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 A criminal. So I saw Jesus took my place in sickness and I concluded <laughs> it is once and for all. Every sacrifice of Christ is once and for all. It never returned. And so I took it. That's how powerful scriptural pictures can be. And Jesus said, as far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. Now, who am I from the mirror of the world? Who am I? What is the mirror of the world showing as my heritage in redemption? All things have passed away. All things have become new. What things have been made new by redemption in my life? Number one, you are redeemed a fruitful vine and not a barren fig. Fruitful vine. You are born into a most fruitful family. Isaiah 5 verse 1. Now will I sing to my well beloved. And you know we have been accepted in the beloved through redemption. A song of my beloved touching his vineyard. So he is the owner of the vineyard. My well beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful here. We are here in Mount Zion. God's most fruitful here. Amen. But my people are going to captivity because they have no knowledge. You are redeemed a fruitful vine. No aspect of your life is permitted to be fruitless. Therefore, from now, every aspect of your life is declared fruitful. Yeah. If you look at that, Deuteronomy 28, I'm beginning from verse 1 to 13, you see the fruitfulness of God's agenda for his people. As you observe to do all that he commands you, all these blessings will come to you and overtake you if you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that he commands you. You shall be blessed in the city. You shall be blessed in the field. Amen. Your storehouse shall be blessed. 
Everything about you is ordained to be fruitful in redemption. Everything about you, everything about me is ordained to be fruitful. He said, in the fruit of your body, your body is ordained to be fruitful in redemption. He redeemed us from the cause of the law to bring us into the blessings of the law. So, Jesus redeemed us to be free from verse 14 to 66 and be brought into the blessings of verse 1 to verse 13. Praise God. The causes are listed from 14 to 66. He redeemed us from them and brought us into the blessing of all round fruitfulness in verse 1 to 13. That's the verdict of Galatians 3, 13 and 14. So you are ordained a fruitful vine, not a barren fig. Amen. So your work shall be fruitful. Amen. Your body shall be fruitful. Amen. Your storehouse shall be fruitful. Amen. Your going out shall be fruitful. Amen. Your coming in shall be fruitful. Amen. That's your picture. That's your picture. Number two picture that we find that points out a breaking through heritage or limit breaking heritage is the fact that you have been redeemed as a lifeless stone. An untouchable entity. He said, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. You know, we are God's building. And holy priesthood. So, what is this stone like? I'll lay in Zion a stone. Whosoever trusts in him shall not be ashamed. Wherefore, so it is contained in scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And his name is who? Jesus. The church is built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, anyone that comes against this stone is broken in pieces. Anyone against whom it falls is grinded to powder. Powder. So redemption confers dominion on your life. Makes you untouchable by the devil and his agents. Makes evil to bow at your gate. See yourself as a rock of offense. You hit at me, you scatter. A rock of offense. After the order of Christ. So any witch, any wizard that is eyeing you for destruction gets destroyed in your place. Any agent of the devil blocking your way forward haven't seen your picture of a living stone after the order of Christ. They all cleared the way for you today. So shall it be. So you are not here to struggle for survival. You are not here at the mercy of the devil. The devil is on at your mercy. 
what you don't allow him, he can't do it. Can I hear your amen? Some miscreants entered our premises in the old church. And I said, Jesus, I smite them with leprosy. I mean, with madness, madness. They didn't get anything out of the place. Nothing. Nothing. We got to the office in the morning, 8 o'clock. The first mad boy was brought. Dressed, going to work. After he failed, attempting the night. Took his dress on the street. Tore it. So they caught him like a mad dog. And brought him to the premises. I don't know why they brought him there. And I wanted to pray. Jesus said, don't. You told me to do it. You told me to do it. Now, to show it's no joke. At 10 o'clock. Oh, they are about. They brought the second one. I said, Jesus, I need to go home. <laughs> Amen. That's the meaning of a rock of offense. Don't touch. So I release you today as a touch not entity to your world. that sets his eyes on you to hurt you get hurt in your play in the name of Jesus every tongue that rises against you in judgment that you condemn God will confirm So what do you need to do? Build up. Build up a spiritual house. Build up yourself in the world. Enhance your divine nature content by the world. Whereby are given unto us these exceeding great and precious promises that we might be partakers of the divine nature. So build up as you build up your untouchable entity status keeps on being enhanced we are built get built up get built up it's vital it's important get built up an heir when it's a child different nothing from a servant until the time appointed of the father. It's not about age. It's about content. It's about what? It's about content. <laughs> it's about content. It's a, and from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. It's about content. It's about content. The word content is what defines how stony your life is. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> the word content. There is always thought to do to actualize every picture from scripture. There is always what to do. Number three picture is that every child of God is redeemed an ambassador for Christ. An ambassador for Christ. An ambassador is the representative of his nation in another nation. So what you do to him, you are doing to that nation. Mm. That's why traffic police don't harass them. Yes, sir. You are harassing the nation he represents. <laughs> In 2 Corinthians 5.20, it said, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray thee in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. If you start from verse 18, every child of God in verse 17 has a ministry of reconciliation. Reconciling the world back to God. Engaging in soul winning. 
Amen. Amen. And so drafting, you win and draft them to church so they can be established in the faith. Amen. Now, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation and has given us the word of reconciliation so we are now ambassadors by engaging in the reconciliation task of redemption. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? The Samaritan woman didn't have to say Jesus said, come and see a man who told me what I ever did. And they came. Same day she met Jesus. Same day she met Jesus. Same day she met Jesus. And many of the Samaritans believed on him. So every child of God is redeemed an ambassador for Christ. I am divine, ye are the branches. Every branch of me that bears fruit, he keeps fish so he can keep bearing more fruit. Everyone that does not bear fruit, he cuts off. I've, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have ordained you that he should go and bring forth fruit, and the fruit should abide. So every child of God has that ambassadorial task. And it's the only way to actualize your ambassadorial status in the kingdom. Keep at it. My team and I were on the street yesterday, had a very great time, returned with 267 souls for the kingdom. Amen. Yes, I've been doing that for quite some time, but I began doing it on a business-like level since 1976. Ever refreshed? The blessings, there is no money, there's no position that can attract it. Peace like a river, man. Joy unspeakable. Can no depression. You know why? You are donating joy to heaven. You can't have sorrow on the earth. What you sow is what you reap. So I've kept my smiles since 1969. Can't find myself, Brother David, what's wrong? No. No. There is joy in heaven over us who repent. One of us sat down here in one of the services. I gave him the first tract in his life in 1969. Jesus loves you. Ben was home. He remembered the place where I gave it to him. He remembered the time I gave it to him. So when we had the meeting in 2014, he was telling me that the first tract he received in his life, I gave him. Sir, anybody planning to touch me, he's finished himself. Yes, sir. I'm representing the kingdom of heaven on the earth as an ambassador for Christ, reconciling the world back to God. It's not about title. It has nothing to do with title. It has nothing to do with I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet. It has nothing to do with it. If you're involved in reconciling the world back to God, whether you went to school or not, you're an ambassador for Christ. The dignity of the kingdom you represent follows you about. You know, you can toy with some ambassadors from some places, but not ambassador of America. Can you? They will fly to your house. Inside your bedroom. They say, who did? They say, Mr. Lagbaja, okay. They will go you. Okay, this is bedroom. This is the dining. This is the bedroom. Then they press the machine to his bedroom. You can't find him bedroom. You can't. Without that is your megad at the gate has no piano. That's a bow and arrow stage. The world has left that place for touching. An American citizen, you pay. <coughs> How much more for assaulting his ambassador? Any devil that touches you from today will pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> One, it will not succeed. Yeah. His generation will pay for it. Yeah. So I release you as a touch not entity to your world today. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. 
whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work that will help him actualize the picture he saw, that man shall be blessed. That means he shall walk in the reality of that picture. He shall walk in the reality of that picture. It's your turn. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Finally, you are redeemed as a seed of Abraham for generational impact. For generational impact. Every child of God is a seed of Abraham. Galatians 3, 29. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. By myself have I sworn that in blessing I will bless thee. In multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the seed by the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of their enemy. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed generationally. Because that's what is happening now. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Up to tomorrow. You'll find the fingerprints of the seed of Abraham in every invention on this earth today. The Jews. Tiny but strong. The economy of Israel is stronger than all the nations of the Middle East. The blessing of Abraham is speaking generationally in his natural seed. How much more in his spiritual seed? Because the spiritual is higher than the natural. What's speaking here is the blessing of Abraham. I will curse him that causes thee and bless them that bless thee. That's the blessing of Abraham. You can't stop it. So, God's hand is not limited to why you are here. It will be speaking years and yes, after you are gone. Amen. The blessing of God on your life will go down your generations. They be praying in the name of the God of their grandfather, their great grandfather, their great, great, great grandfather. And God will be answering them. Amen. And Abraham was old and sickened in age. That's the blessing of Abraham. You shall be old and sickened in age. And the Lord has blessed him in all things. You'll be blessed all through the days of your life. And it will overflow to your generations after you. Let me hear your loudest, amen. amen. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning, blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessed. But if you are Abraham, see, Jesus said, do the works of Abraham. Abraham was an ever ready, obedient servant of God. Ever ready, obedient servant of God. Get out of their country, Abraham departed. Circumcised all the male bonds. As soon as God left speaking with him, he took a knife and started cutting everybody, beginning with himself. Take your son, your only son Isaac. He jumped, rose up early in the morning on his way to go and slaughter his only begotten son. Undeserved obedience. was the lifestyle of Abraham. So for you and me to walk in the blessing of Abraham, we must begin to walk in delightsome obedience, prompt obedience, not procrastinated obedience, 
prompt obedience. He was walking with God after the order of Abraham to enjoy the blessings of Abraham. He said, don't be slothful, but follow us of them who through faith and patience obtain or inherit the promises. You have to know what they did and take steps after them to realize what came out of it in their own lives. You have to. Well, Operation 10 for Christ 2020, no, that's not for me. By reason of status in my workplace, can't find someone like me on the street. I'm not Papa. Okay, what of those who came to your room? Did you witness to them? Did you ever invite your secretary or your office staff? I'd like you to be in church next Sunday. It's a covenant day of open doors. For you calling him, sir, he will come. Yes. But your status won't let you call him. I'm MD, CEO. I lived all my life in America. Uh, we don't do this kind of thing. That's why you don't see the kind of thing we see. That's why you don't see. Have you ever seen any organization of this status in your life that is been debt free since inception. Debt free. Over 30,000 people on the payroll. And now we are adding to it. About 1,000 are joining us or 2,000 this month. Man, there is no strength. And you have never had other nurse. Excuse me. You must give today. 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 Stand up. Give. Walking with Jesus, I walk in the light. No darkness can cover me. Strengthened by His Spirit, I cross the Red Sea, shining my light into the glory land. You better wake up and walk in the light. This thing is sweet, sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. This thing is sweet. I can testify that from morning till night. Zero pressure. Sleep like a baby. Wake up like a child of God and just walk in the streets with a sense of dignity and honor. You will not suffer humiliation in your life again. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody has caught a word this morning that's taking you to your next level. That word is taking you to your next level. So you can't enjoy the blessing of Abraham without walking the steps of Abraham. You can't. You can't. You cannot. Arise, get down to Lagos, raise me people. I sent someone that same day. This is the place. I said, now, go ahead and begin to find out who wants to sell what. Same day. I will dedicate this sanctuary September 18, 1999. Following day, we were here. We started drawing the line. Following day. It was not in plan before. <laughs> Prompt and the life of obedience is your only gateway to Abrahamic order of blessing. You are not coerced. You are not under pressure. You are just enjoying it. That will be your portion from now. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> now, this is what it takes to assess your picture from scriptures. Be a man and a woman of the spirit. You can't hear from heaven without being in the spirit. I was in the spirit on the last day and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. You can't see the things of the spirit without being in the spirit. A natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God because they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them, but they can only be unveiled by the spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. Grace to remain a man and a woman of the spirit. As you look through scriptures, as you stand in the place of prayer, receive it now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Today is our covenant day of marital breakthrough. Marital challenges are becoming very great issues of concern in the body of Christ today. But we have the answer in the world. Today, every form of marital crisis, marital tensions, separations, threats of divorce, living as in a dormitory, no communication, tension day and night, comes to an end finally today. Wisdom is a house built and by understanding is established. And by knowledge shall all thy chambers be filled with all manner of precious and pleasant riches. Nothing builds like wisdom. What is wisdom? Whosoever hears my saying and dwell them is a wise man. I pray that the wisdom of God that builds homes will find its way into everyone's life today. Yeah. Every challenged family shall be liberated. Yeah. Every shattered marriage shall be restored. Yeah. Every sweet home shall become sweeter. Every marital spell resisting the marital destiny of God's people in terms of marital delays, broken engagements, change of date of marriage without end, one after the other and after the other, whatever represents a generational cause, response for marital challenges. Today, the causes are broken. Everyone's marital destiny is breaking forth in grand style. <laughs> Male and female created in them, and the Lord blessed them. Genesis 1:27. Genesis 2.18, it's not good for a man to be alone, so I'll make a home for him. I'll make, give an help mate, a help suitable for him. I know what is suitable for him. I'll make that help suitable for him available. But what do we have? The devil knows that... Um, if two of you shall agree on that, as touching anything, it shall be done for you. So he wants to break that covenant by coming in between the two and creating tension that will never allow room for agreement. And so the family cannot go forward. Always be resistant. The ultimate to separate them from God is not working. Bad, 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 bad. It's out to frustrate some innocent people from being settled in marriage so as to disconnect them from their God out of frustration. There is nothing the devil is looking for but to separate you and me from God. But today, in the name of Jesus, Every activity of hell against your continuous work with God is declared destroyed. <laughs> For I am the Lord that sets the solitary in families and brings out those who are bound with chains. Today, that verdict will come true in your life. <laughs> Every chain of marital spells that has gone through generations, you marry, you pack back to your home, your father's house, you marry, 
and, and things like that. And it's on and on. Everybody there seems to enjoy divorce. That siege is over today. <laughs> you have families where to get married is a hard task. I saw one here, 11 daughters in the home. None was married. But Jesus broke the jeans and set them free. Today, everyone bound with chains that is resisting, they are stepping into their glorious marital destiny. The chains are to, today broken. The chains are broken today. Every besieged marital destiny is released today. There shall be testimonies of divine connectivity this week. Before this month is over, God has stepped into your own affairs. Boy, if you check that Psalm 68 and verse 6, mm, I'm out to set the solitary in families and to release those who are bound with chains. But the rebellious shall dwell in a dry land. What does that mean? Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church? No. Not my kind of wife. Even God can love her. No. The rebellious shall dwell in a dry land. Wife, submit yourself to your own husband and everything. Ah, never. High school in America. No. 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 You know. No. No. Say, Papa said, no, leave Papa alone. <laughs> Papa said, what? Submit to anybody, anybody. I have my life to live, and then it's on his way out of marriage to dwell in a dry land. To dwell in a dry land, to dwell in a dry land. The rebellious dwell in a dry land. There are some women, it's impossible for their husband to give direction, impossible. Even to offer cancer, impossible. You can't retain a home like that. You are, you are not in the kingdom. That's period. Anyone that the world does not matter to is not in the kingdom. It's a passerby. Very straight. And then you find very proud husband. I am the head of this family. If you talk, when I'm talking, fire will fall. <laughs> Is that expression of love? You have every detailed record of the offenses of your wife since the day you got married. You know, when we're in primary school, they had what they call black book. When they write your name there, that's the end. <laughs> they threaten you that your name will enter black book. Say, please, please, I beg. <laughs> I mean, is that love? If Christ recorded your fault, will you ever get saved? You should know where you're coming from. Can a man say he loves God when he does not love his brother whom he can see? If you don't love your brother whom you can see, then you don't love God. Your closest ally is your marriage partner. Anybody who can love his wife is a dangerous man. Stay off him. <laughs> Anybody who does not love his wife, stay off that man. He can kill you at any time. Grace not to rebel against the truth. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus 
Jesus loved us when we were unlovable. We were dirty sinners when Jesus came down to pay the ultimate price for us. So, for arrogant wives, listen to me, God receives the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Pride goes before destruction. And a hurtful look before a fall. Caution. Most of our challenges are self caused because we have ignored the wisdom of God to work in our own wisdom. I can submit to anybody, but not to that, my husband. God, you too try it. <laughs> no! I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. The gap is too wide. Me and my husband, the gap. is too wide. Then you're your way out. Please settle down. Don't rebel against the truth or you dwell in a dry land. Let's learn how to start honoring one another in love and in the fear of God. From today, beatings among family members stop right here. Yeah. That does not become a king. Can you imagine a king like this in his palace? They say, King, you know, he said, it's not enough. It's not enough. <laughs> That's what you are doing when you're engaging in a wrestling contest boxing contest in your family. You are in your palace boxing. And he just said, <laughs> he doesn't know he's a king. He doesn't know he's a queen. Everybody is frustrated. No more. Amen. No more. Amen. The last beatings that occurred in any family is the last you will ever know. The reason why many, many young people don't go to church is that what they see with their parents does not reflect the truth of scriptures. And they believe everybody else is faking it. Want to come to church? No, I'm not going. You must come to church. He comes because you are the father. He's not hearing anything. If this is how to be a Christian, then this thing is not true. May no one here be an agent of destruction to their children. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know why many pastors' children, founders of churches, go away from God? What they hear their parents preach or their father preach is not what he lives. You say, okay, go to another church. No, how will I know what the other one is doing? The one I know, Koro Koro, like this. <laughs> what he's saying there is not true. And so many of them went away. In the name of Jesus, no one will be instrumental to disconnecting their children from God. Yeah. Well, the good news is today, many runaway husbands will return. Many fled away wife will return home. Yeah. You heard that testimony? The man carried his luggage from wherever he's coming from. And this daughter of Zion received the blessing. And he knew it was for her. And while she was cooking, the runaway husband has driven home. He said, sweetheart, I'm back. Amen. The journey is over. There shall be many repeat of such testimonies this week. <laughs> Do you know simply saying I am sorry to your wife will terminate your sorrow. To simply say because you are the one wrong but because you are the man I can't be wrong. They say why? 
my father told me the day you say sorry to your wife, that's your end. Okay, who is your father? If a priest. <laughs> my mother said, never say sorry to a woman, no. he will ride over you. And you use what is not written to destroy your glorious destiny. Well, the good news today is you are free at last. Yeah. Don't let any devil deceive you. There is no unloveable wife. There is no husband you can submit to. Jesus told me this November 1981. It sank into me like thunderbolt. And I said, I'm set for a heat free marriage. For everyone on the line for miracle marriage, this month and particularly this week is declared your week of encounter. Your settlement process begins this week. Somebody is reaching out to you and you are reaching out to someone this week. Amen. And it will be the right person. Amen. There shall be no guesswork. Amen. It will give joy to your parents. And bring fulfillment to your destiny. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Lift up your right hand and celebrate the faithfulness of God. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. The key to marital bliss, just keep loving Jesus. We know that all things work together for good to them that love. Them. Keep loving Jesus and keep proving that you do. By loving your neighbor as yourself. Keep proving that you do by obeying his commandment with delight. And everything will start falling into place in your favor. That shall be your experience. Amen. One more time, give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> Very quickly this morning, you are here in this service and you'd like me to pray with you. To be born again, to be saved, and to live the overcomer's life, and much more importantly, to secure eternity with Christ in heaven, and then we will crawl full journey on earth. So wherever you are, you want your sins to be forgiven this morning. You want Jesus to forgive your sins. You want to begin to live in the newness of life. Please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you right now. Everyone that wants to turn his life or our life over to Jesus, please turn. God bless you, and God bless you. Somebody else is standing up wherever you are, stand to your feet. You want to turn your life over to Christ this morning, please turn. Please turn. Please turn. I'll be praying for you right there where you are, please turn. I'll be praying for you right there where you are, please turn. And God bless you as you do. Amen. There are also people here today that need to rededicate your life to Christ. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet. You want to reconnect back to God, please stand to your feet. Maybe you are once here, but at the point, I would say disconnect between you and your Father in heaven. You want to reconnect back to him today, please stand to your feet. God bless you as you do. Many more are getting up. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. I'll be praying with you right there, where you are. Thank you, Father. Everyone standing, please move to the nearest eye to where you are. Some church officials are there. They will assist you to uh, complete those leaves as we pray. Can I ask ushers to please make available Operation 10 for Christ 2020? Our one operation for the year. Ensuring that 10 souls are establishing the faith through your engagement this year. And you strike when your iron is hot. You are just completing your 21 days of prayer and fasting. So hit the ground running. 
and Jesus will be there to confirm his word in your life. It's your year of breaking limits. Everything is breaking forth in your favor. You'll never be stranded again in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of us who are standing for these prayers, please bow your heads in a moment as I lead you in these prayers. Lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I might be set free. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior and I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. I will serve you all the days of my life. Amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. I pray for the covering of the blood over every one of you. You shall not step back into the world. You go forward with Christ. You will not fall down the way. You will make heaven at the end of your journey. Grace to live your us life is released upon your life right now. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please let the stewards come quickly. Please complete your forms and pass them on to the church officials around with you. I will be in touch with you today, but we are reminded of the Believers Foundation class that holds every Monday. You go for only two Mondays. You will be contacted to let you know which one is nearest to where you live. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we all rise, please? The central purpose of the Holy Communion is to empower us to live like Christ. John chapter 6 and verse 57. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me, or live like me. John 14, 9. Whosoever has sent me, has sent the Father. So we take the communion to live like Christ. Therefore, today, as you partake of this communion, whatever cannot be identified with Christ will never be noticed in your life anymore. <laughs> if Christ were married, can you imagine Christ punching his wife? Calling his wife a big fool? Can you imagine Christ involved in separation? And sue for divorce? Can you imagine Jesus stranded maritally? As you partake of this communion, everything that cannot be seen in Christ will never be seen in your life. Can you imagine sickness in Jesus? Oppression on his life? Whatever you can't imagine in Christ gets off you at the instance of the communion today. So shall it be. This is declared the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Partake of this and begin to live like him in the name of Jesus. Please get seated as we serve the table of the Lord right away. I approach this table by faith. Every provision in the kingdom delivers by faith. I'm living like Jesus from today. Spirit, soul, and body. I'm living like Jesus today in my daily walk with God. I'm living like Jesus today in my home. I'm living like Jesus today as he settles me. Finally, finally. Thank you, Jesus. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We 
It's common knowledge that when you are out of service, you are no longer eligible for promotion in that organization. How many knows that? It is quality service that entitles anyone to promotion wherever he is. Grace to serve God to the realm of breaking limits. This year, receive it right now. Jesus stood by the well and ministered to that woman and he said, my meat is to do the work. So, getting the lost back to God is the work. My meat is to do the work of him that sent me and to finish, to do the will and to finish his work. That's his work. May Operation 10 for Christ 2020 deliver with speed in your life. And as it does, welcome to the full swing of your realm of breaking limit. Amen. So shall it be Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. What you know is important, but what to do with what you know is what impacts on your life. May grace to engage in intensive spiritual stewardship be your portion from now. Lift up those two hands. It's your week of testimonies. Yeah. It will be clear this week that the siege over anyone's life is finally over. Yeah. Can you imagine Jesus looking for a job? So, every door that has been closed against your career breakthrough is open finally today. Somebody was upset that God has not answered them and asked the wife to go to America and let them rest for some time. By the time they go to America, they tested the wife and it was pregnant with quadruplets. You know, it appears always darkest before dawn. The waiting of anyone here for miracle children is finally over today. It's your year of laughter. Amen. And it begins now. Amen. It's your year of laughter. Amen. And your laughter begins now. Amen. Lift up those two hands. And together let's share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship, surely. God's goodness and goodness of All the days of God. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. It's my year of breaking limits. Then what eyes have not seen or ears have shall be your experience this year. Congratulations. Congratulations. If you came in after the worship offering was received in the second service, there are officials around the altar and various exits carrying lit offering tags. Do well to drop your offering as you go and be blessed as you do. If you want to share your testimony,